All right, everybody, welcome to this week's Dissecting Design. We are taking a look back at the Batman Arkham series. And I could really have done this on any other games. We may even do more on the later ones down the line. But since it's been a few years, I figured let's go back to the one that started it all. This is Batman Arkham Asylum. This is the Game of the Year edition for the PC. But I originally played this on the, I think it was the Xbox 360, I want to say. And man, this was one of those games that just came out of nowhere. To really just shock everyone, just the quality of it. And not only being one of the best Batman games, or I think the best Batman game of all time, but also one of the best uses of a license, as well as just really doing a great job of creating gameplay that felt explicitly designed for Batman. Previous games that featured Batman basically had our favorite Cape Crusader pigeonholed into another genre, usually a beat-em-up. And while Arkham Asylum does have fighting or action game elements, it's really the package as a whole that made this game something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up the start of the game and we're going to talk about what really helped to make this game sell. Alright, welcome to the opening cutscene of Arkham Asylum here with the ubiquitous bat signal in the sky. Now, developer of the Arkham series, Rocksteady Studios, this was not their first time making a game. I believe they did the... Final Fight 3D reboot a few years before this one. But it wasn't really looked at as being all that amazing. <laughs> but when a lot of people saw Batman Arkham Asylum for the first time, it really wowed us. Especially with the presentation. We're going to be focusing in on Batman in one second and our favorite villain, the Joker. <laughs> In terms of graphical style, the game's definitely going for that more realistic look. And of course, if you didn't hear that, that was Mark Hamill reprising his famous role. And the presentation of Batman Arkham Asylum would be featured later in City and Night really helped to make this game pop. They didn't just pick, you know, random voice actors to do the characters. We have, of course, Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill. In the first, in this game, I believe Arlene Sulkin did the voice of Harley Quinn. And I think I like her better than Tara Strong, but that's a conversation for another time. And I'm going to skip the rest of this so we can actually start watching him walk in. And again, the game has a methodical nature to it. We're not just jumping into Batman fighting Mr. goons. Gordon. We have yes, this whole sir. situation that grows. I'm also going to lower the audio, which unfortunately means we won't be able to hear too much of Kevin and Mark. But we're going to be fast forwarding in a few minutes anyway. We got here just before you did. And again, they really went all out with this one. There's also case files that talk about all the various characters of the Batman mythos. And again, this is great stuff for someone like me whose only real experience or exposure to comic book characters is when they get translated to another medium, such as animated series like Batman, TV shows, movies, and so on. So my only real, uh, I guess, source of information for Batman, of course, came from Batman the Animated Series. And so being able to hear all the original voice actors really give it, them, give it their all for this was amazing. You know what? I prefer the good old <laughs> Much more personal. Got a red light. Multiple prohibited items. <laughs> I want Joker searched again. Uh, it's not the patient. It's... <laughs> but we're going to uh, cut things in the next few seconds or so as we'll start talking about the gameplay and what made the Arkham series just wow everybody. 
and it comes down to basically three main areas of gameplay. So, I will see you all in a second. Alright, we are definitely further in than we were last time. This is taken from my previous save that's pretty much, I think, either near the end of the game or I've already beaten the main quest and now it's just cleaning up after all the bad guys. So when it comes to the Arkham series, there's basically three core gameplay mechanics or game systems here. So the first one is the open world or the exploration side of things. It's not just you going from area to area, you're basically exploring the map and growing Batman's abilities. And while I'm going to be showing off <laughs> basic combat here, there's going to be more to it than that later on. When it comes to the exploration or the adventure side of the Batman games, it definitely becomes very similar to Metroid, or specifically Metroidvania. You unlock new items as you play through, which in turn will get you into new areas, and is used for either progression or for these little bonus areas. The... Was so well, it was almost invisible. Thank you, Riddler. Riddler being a major part, as the fact that he basically becomes your MacGuffin, I guess, <laughs> quest in the game. With him putting down Riddler trophies and the later games adding in additional challenges. Now the exploration size you can see is also by detective mode, which is basically I guess quote unquote Batman's eagle vision from Assassin's Creed. This is used for seeing enemies through walls, and plays in the fact that Batman isn't just a capable fighter, he is a intelligent detective, and we'll see that when we talk about the stealth gameplay later on. Now another part of playing the game is of course being able to upgrade Batman. And again, I've already, this is done near the end of the game, so I have all his upgrades unlocked at this point. But this allows you to enhance your skills in all the areas, and gives you more to play with. I'm also hoping that when the time comes I'll be able to show things off reasonably well when we get to combat. Now if you look over there, we have these little treats. Now in the... one thing to take note of, in Arkham Asylum, it definitely plays more Metroidvania. It, the game is separated into different areas, and the areas themselves will be only available via having the right upgrade. So there is that sense of linearity. In Arkham City, it becomes more open world. You have the entirety of the Arkham City area to explore, but specific areas are only available if you have the right upgrades. So this is one thing that I wouldn't be able to do without having this item. Oh wait, I think there was something there. You do that environmental analysis, basically for solving riddle riddles and such. Another thing that I want to point out while I'm on the screen, or while I'm playing with this character, is the character bios. As I said in the last section, I don't have a frame of reference from the comic book, so being able to get all this information about the various characters and what they do and their personalities really is great for me. And as you can see, there's a lot of them. There's also patient interviews, again, original dialogue made for the game. And again, we could spend some time just wandering around being Batman here, but let's move on to the next gameplay system, and that is, of course, Stealth. Alright, welcome back. We are in one of the stealth challenges in order to show off the stealth aspects of the Arkham series. As I said in the last part, uh, one second, let me make that just a tiny bit lower. It seems I didn't save my profile. There we go. So, as I was saying, 
A major part of the Batman of the Arkham series is the fact that it's not just about Batman finding clues and fighting guys in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is the major stealth aspect. Again, Batman, of course, strikes terror in the hearts of villains. And Rocksteady did an amazing job of the stealth system. Traditionally, when we think of stealth, we think of a very passive character. Someone who doesn't really want to get into fights or doesn't want to really engage. That's not the case here. We are the Alpha Predator, or I think it's called Apex Predator, how they described it. It's up to us to hunt these guys down and take them out one at a time. And that means, of course, getting them in any which way. And the stealth system is really loose in terms of giving you a variety of ways of doing that. For instance, I can throw a remote control battery and distract them. We can throw a sonic one to attract characters where we need them. And what I want to do is that we can get someone at the right spot is a famous Batman maneuver. Now these enemies, by the fact they're highlighted red, when you see in Detective Vision, means that they are armed. And the idea of the bounce of the Arkham series is that Batman can take out most villains by themselves or hand to hand, but he's not equipped for gunplay. So we need to pick them apart one at a time. And of course, do that. Now there are many ways of taking these guys out. The idea is we have to stun them before we do the incapacitation, so something like this. Uh, boom. Goodbye. Now, if I was playing this for real, there's it challenges to do in each one of these maps to kill or take these guys out in specific ways. Now, here's one thing that I like to do. I'm hoping I can get this to work. Oh, no, I missed. What I want to do is put someone underneath him and then cut that rope so he falls on the guy and knocks him out that way. Now, of course, we can even use our explosive gel to leave essentially a proximity bomb. I'm trying to get the... There's a way to do um, hotkey commands for the various gadgets, but I think that's more expand upon in Arkham City and when we're in combat. So we look over here and see if we can get the challenge. There you go. <laughs> Again, the variety of ways you can take characters out is a really great. If you want to just take them out like the old-fashioned way, you can certainly do that. I'm going to see if we can do the back claw. And take him out that way. Wait for it. Now their detection is usually based on whatever level they're at. So he can't see me while I'm up here, but if I was at his same elevation, he would. Watch this. Goodbye. He's fine. Again, Batman doesn't kill, he just brutally uh, wounds people. Let's see, anything else I can show off? Huh. This should be good. Let's see. Here we go. Hi, buddy. There's one. I think in the... It's been a while since I played this, but I know you can reverse direction as well. I think either in this game or in the later ones. And they're getting a bit paranoid. You can also throw multiple batterings. Let's see, can we get them all? Oh, 
You saw it coming. Now, if you want to get away from them, you need to just quickly fly around. Or grapple around. But again, take note of the fact that I'm the one who's basically instigating the combat or instigating the stealth actions. It's not me trying to hide around and be afraid of these guys. I'm trying to make them be scared of me. And that never gets old. Let's see if we can spook them. You can hear them, they're getting nervous by the fact that Batman is taking them all out. Can also use a line launcher to like basically just like run right into them or launch right there. Alright, so what I'm gonna do. As long as we are crouched, they will not hear me as I'm walking around. I'm going to try to go for the inverted, or this takedown. Oh wait, there's a good target right there. And you see, you can also grab guys from below, too. Again, they give you such a variety of ways of taking characters down. It really lends into the sandbox nature, so watch this. Hi. <laughs> and it rem and the makes Batman Arkham these series really remind me of Metal Gear Solid and how there's just a variety of tools built into the systems to give you freedom of how you engage these enemies. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> those little physics are jiggling around. Don't get too cocky, Batman. I was just softening you up. <laughs> but when it comes to this kind of gameplay, again, it works because it's not just one option for stealth. Many stealth games or lesser stealth games will only give you like one way of like avoiding enemies, one way of taking them out. Usually you can, you know, get behind them and do a stealth hit. In this game or in the series as a whole, you're given just a huge variety be it inverted takedowns, corner takedowns, using your gadgets, pulling them off of ledges, and so on. You can even just drop down behind a guy and just punch him in the back if you want. And the game never, or at least in the main game, doesn't explicitly force you to do anything or play the game in a specific way. While they do introduce enemies later on that will mix things up, such as guys with collars that will lure everyone around when they get taken down, or blowing up gargoyle statues, if you just want to run around, sneak behind someone, and then take them out that way, you can do that. But the options and the rewards are there if you want to get fancy. But, as I said, Batman isn't just about being in the shadows. So, let's take a look at what happens when Batman gets angry. Alright, we're in the combat challenge now to show off the combat of the Arkham series, and this, for this video, this is going to be basically the basic version of it, as it did get expanded upon in Arkham City, and I assume with Arkham Knight. But, the first time I played this, it really wowed me in terms of what Rocksteady did. And again, this all plays in this fact that the gameplay is explicitly designed around Batman. Batman is, of course, a master martial artist, and common thugs aren't supposed to cause him problem. Again, in fights like this, he is always in control. Combat is built around basically three buttons. You have one button for punching, one button for countering, and one button for stunning. Now, in the later games, you do get more hotkeys when it comes to using your gadgets. Let me see what we got here. Again, combat is just all about following the pacing of what's going on. Now we build up my attack there. And when you get high enough combo multipliers, you get to do a takedown that will instantly knock down 
one opponent of your choice. Go easy on him. <laughs> so I'm going to see if we can perform a takedown here. Again, Batman doesn't kill people. He just... Uh, I don't know what we call it here. Goodbye. But again, this is a great job of showing how you can have a very engaging combat system without needing to make it overly complicated. We don't have to rely on a lot of buttons here. Again, it's just about you understanding the timing of playing, uh, timing of your commands, as well as being able to throw characters around like so. And again, if you want to be simple, you can do that, or you can try to get fancy with throwing in different gadgets, taking them out like that. <laughs> Alright, can we do it? And again, if you really want to be badass, you get through a fight without uh, getting hit at all. And again, this is a game where you can have like 1 on 12 fights, and the 12 are at the disadvantage. Because, of course, he's Batman. He's fine. And boom. Now the later Arkham games do integrate more of the gadgets into combat, as well as throwing in different enemies that are explicitly designed to counter or force you into certain actions. Such as guys with a taser that you can't attack from the front. You have to vault over them or stun them before you do the attack. They also throw in more larger enemies. But again, the combat system never grows in terms of complexity, just in terms of providing you with options. And again, this all just fits brilliantly with the Batman mythos and the Batman design. So, because combat is so engaging, we're going to do one more. I'm going to put on a later challenge so you can see some of the different enemies. Again, I haven't played this game for serious in several years, so I'm sure I'm going to flub this. But I remember the first time I played the demo for this game, and had a chance to see the stealth and combat sections at work, and it just floored me. I just had no idea they could make a game like this. Sorry, guys. Oh no, we got hit. Oh, there goes our flawless combo, sadly. And like I said, if you just want to play this for the beam up you can do that. But the game definitely has the option and rewards you for becoming more in familiar with the systems. I was trying to do a shortcut with the back claw, but I remember that's in Arkham City. His system. But then we'll hop over him. And then he throws something at you, you can throw it right back if you hit the right counter. Alright, goodbye. Okay, now I can do special stuff when you see the combo multiplier up there turn gold. Now one complaint is that you can leave yourself vulnerable when you're trying to take guys out. And it can be frustrating if you're going for very high play. Oh, I thought I could grab that. Again, this is the first time we really had a combat system just dedicated to Batman like this. Bam. And again, all built on very few button interactions. <laughs> now again, we now have a guy with a knife, which he will block. 
So I need to do a stun or just perform a takedown on him to knock him out of the picture. Like so. Again, he's fine. We didn't kill him. You notice I can also throw my Barangs to basically knock guys to the ground so we can focus on their friends. And notice that once you get going, you just become a force of nature. And again, that is the kind of point of this combat system. So making you feel as powerful as you can. I'm sure he'll wake up fine, right? And again, note how they're throwing more enemies at us, but we're still just cleaning house. Because he's Batman. Now they do throw more commands in, or more things to keep track of in the later games, including multiple enemy takedowns. Oh jeez. Again, I am rusty. At my height, I was able to do these things without getting hit at all. And yes, it does feel badass when you can pull that off. Oh, here we go. It's the Bat Dervish. Oh, man. And again, it's less about you memorizing the combos and you just keeping your attention as to where these enemies are, who's trying to attack you. Breaking arms. And stopping enemies from getting guns whenever possible. Gonna build that variation bonus up. And you are out. I don't think we got three uh, bat wings for that. Or batarangs. <laughs> and then as you get better scores here, it unlocks more challenges as well as winning or getting further in the main game itself. But I think that is a really good explanation of the combat system. So we're going to head back to the main menu. I'm going to discuss some of the issues. I guess I should say nitpicks that I have with the Arkham series. When I think about some of my favorite games of the last few years or the last decade, the Arkham series is definitely one of them. And anything that I talk about in terms of complaints or problems, again, please take it with a grain of salt, as a lot of the stuff is just nitpicking. But following Batman Arkham Asylum Arkham City, it kind of felt that the formula became very stuck. And for those of you listening or watching this right now, I'm curious what you think about the transition from the Metroidvania or linear area exploring of Arkham Asylum versus the open world of Arkham City. Because I've heard from fans who felt very divisive or polarized over that switch. When it comes to the actual gameplay, again, what they do instead of adding brand new stuff, at least up until Arkham City, was making more refinements in, or I'm sorry, not in Arkham City, in Arkham Knight. In Arkham City, again, the combat system is fleshed out, there's more enemy variations, and more ways of tweaking combat without adding more buttons for you to press. The stealth aspect becomes more involved as well, giving you more options, and again, throwing more enemies or more enemy types. But, one area that I think a lot of people found themselves not enjoying the Arkham series as much in was the detective side. The detective vision is another major controversial point, because it basically makes the game be easy mode. 
And while you can simply ignore it, it can make things a little bit more frustrating to play without it. Especially in stealth, giving you full range of where enemies are. But again, that all plays into the fact that we are supposed to be Batman. Batman is never going to be associated as a weak or passive character. Now, when Rocksteady did decide to integrate something new, they did that with Arkham Knight with the Batmobile sections, or the Bat Tank, I'm not sure what they call it, and a lot of people didn't like that. They felt it was just sandwiched in, or uh, forced into the rest of the experience, and people came to the Arkham series to play Batman, not to play the Batmobile. But in terms of again of like anything that I would say is wrong, it's very hard for me to find something that I would say that I outright hate about the series or find troublesome. And I just really love the series. Again, being able to get such a high quality game in the, the Batman property is just a treat for me. And so this section is going to be fairly short because again, I can't think of too many things wrong with it. If I had to again get into nitpicking territory, it would have been nice to see a little bit more in terms of integrating the three systems of exploration, combat, and stealth together. This is the one area that I think the Metal Gear series does a little bit better, especially with the later games like Metal Gear Solid 4, 5, and Peace Walkers, or Peace Walker. In Batman, everything is very much section or a uh, court quartered uh, well corral I think that's the better word to use here when you're in combat there's no stealth when you're in stealth there's no combat and when you're exploring there's none of the other two so it makes a game feel segmented like that and even when it goes open world in the later games you still get that same thing you can't really dig into exploring the world or uh, being the detective when you're when there's enemies around. Now, one thing I will say is that Arkham Origins, despite it being considered the worst of the four main games and not developed by Rocksteady, I really like how they try to integrate the detective vision to kind of like a pseudo CSI kind of experience. And I think that would have I would love to have seen more of that in these earlier games. The detective side of Batman in Arkham Asylum is just basically relegated to there's a hot spot right here. Go look at it in Detective Vision and now go to the next spot. Now I will say one complaint or one legitimate complaint about the Arkham series, at least up to what I've played in terms of Origins, are the boss fights. Despite having such a variety of uh, rogues in the Batman mythos, the boss fights of the Arkham series never wowed me in the same way that we saw in Metal Gear. Again, for the Metal Gear Solid series, every boss in that series is a one-off. It's a unique situation that is never repeated in terms of what they want you to do. Fighting something like Solid the Snake in Metal Gear Solid 2 is different from fighting... Um, Oh man, I can't let I forget their names. Oh, of course, the end for Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 3. In the Arkham series, the bosses never really become a major factor in terms of testing you with something new, with one major exception. The Mr. Freeze fight in Arkham City is possibly one of the greatest stealth boss battles I've ever seen in a game, and right there, basically makes Arkham City worthy of its own dissecting design, possibly in the future. But other than that fight, a lot of the bosses are either very pattern-based, or just a simple grudge fight. For instance, in Arkham City, the Two-Face battle just plays out, or when you meet Two-Face, it's just a simple stealth fight. In Arkham Asylum, there's the infamous Croc section, which becomes a very slow and a cumber not slow, not cumbersome, a prodding, or I can't think of a good word to describe it as, but the pace and the general flow of the game just dies at the croc fight. The scarecrow sections were interesting, but they felt more like uh, interactive cutscenes rather than a quote-unquote battle. 
And the most we got was, of course, the Titan Joker battle at the end of Arkham Asylum, which again just plays like a typical boss fight for an action game. Very pattern heavy, figure out what you need to do, and then just repeat it two or three times and you win. So I guess that's like my one main complaint about Arkham Asylum. And again, if we were talking about Arkham Knight, we could probably bring up the Batmobile there. But let's go in game for my final thoughts and we'll wrap things up. Okay, so I'm going to let the intro part of the game play out while we go over my final thoughts. I also want to point out that the game was written by Paul Dini, who was one of the major writers on Batman, the animated series, as well as, of course, many comic books. When I think about the Arkham series, or Arkham uh, Asylum in general, again, this is just a brilliant example of getting the property and the gameplay to match almost perfectly. The game is not just an action title, it's not just about stealth, this is about being Batman. And having a character like this, especially on the stealth side, we rarely see stealth games like this, when you're, where the player is in control, or should be in control of all the situations. While the Assassin's Creed series does get close, you're still supposed to be afraid of these guys, you're still not supposed to directly engage. Batman doesn't have that problem. And again, just creating or using or, I'm sorry, being able to integrate all the elements of the Batman series or the Batman property into the Arkham ones really makes it stand above the other games. We're about to see another character pop up here with Killer Croc. And again, we have uh, characters like Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, so on and so forth. And it becomes, for Batman fans, a case of who are we going to see in the next game. In Arkham City, we see more of characters like Catwoman, the Penguin, Bane makes an appearance again. Sorry if I spoil that part for you. And graphically, it still holds up really well. Especially in terms of the detail of these models. <laughs> Look at that. And again, I could just sit here and play this whole game, but I don't think that will be too much of a dissection. So, we'll wrap things up here. To, I guess, summarize, the Batman Arkham series works by the fact that Rocksteady was willing to really go all out in terms of creating something unique to Batman. So while it does feature elements of the action genre of stealth and adventure, it's really all run through, I guess, this Batman filter. So you never feel like you're playing someone else's stealth game or someone else's action play. And again, the amount of work and refinement that went into making this feel like Batman getting all the original, or getting the majority of the original voice actors, the bios of the characters, even having the Riddler essentially be, again, your collectible uh, minigame or side quest, all work to making this being one of the best examples of a licensed game and easily one of the best Batman games. Again, we could probably have a debate as to which one of the three, sorry, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, is the best best Batman game. You've never let me catch you. And again, the first time I played this, it just floored me. I thought the Batman Begins game was going to be our best Batman game. So it was just a shock to see this game. And it reminds me again of playing Resident Evil 4 for the first time and seeing what they did in terms of evolving things out. But we're going to end our dissecting design here, so say goodbye to Batman and the Joker for now. So what do you think about the Arkham series? And again, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, but if you are new, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back for daily discussions on game design here and on gamewisdom.com where we examine the art and science of games. And look out for more dissecting designs each Monday. And if you would like to suggest one in the future, let me know. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Unfortunately, Batman will not be waving goodbye here, but I will see you all next time.
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and come back nightly around 10 Eastern for regular game streams. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on game design topics, be sure to check out game-wisdom.com and follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates from me throughout the day. And be sure to check out our Patreon campaign and find us on Patreon under GW Bicer for ways to not only support Game Wisdom, but you can get access to our Discord channel where we'll talk game design topics as well as allow you to vote for our Saturday Night Grab Bag stream. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the next video here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.